Hello and welcome to the narrated process video for this mermaid painting. And yeah, um, as you can see, I set up my references on the left again, uh, just straight up on my canvas, which leads to an absolutely claustrophobic workspace, but it's the best I got so far. <laughs> so um, yeah, I have my references. Um, and actually I end up not really using the top two with the kelp. This was my original plan to um, populate the entire scene with more kelp, but it just didn't end up going that way, I guess. I'm very happy with the end result of this painting. This is also why I chose to um, do this in a longer narrated version. So I'm actually sticking really closely to the reference image, which I don't really mind since I'm since I'm doing these mermaid paintings to, well, progress in my craft. So as you can see right now, I'm just sketching the figure. Um, this went pretty well. I think I got a nice gesture out of it. It doesn't really completely look like the reference, but that's not really the point. I wanted to um, just get the feeling for the scene since it is quite moody. I also initially included um, a spear piercing the mermaid through a mermaid through the heart, <laughs> which I spoiler alert don't end up going with. Um, but initially, I thought it uh, would fit the scene well, and I still think that it might fit the scene really well. But I just really liked how it looked without the spear, so I chose to not paint it in the end. So. First we had the um, sketching process, just to figure out where everything goes, and now I'm going in with color. I actually really have grown to enjoy, I've grown to love actually painting the backgrounds. It's probably some of my favorite and most relaxing parts about painting, because I can be quite loose with the entire uh, process. And for this painting I wanted to try something different, which we'll see now. <laughs> is painting the stones with the lasso tool. First, I try to uh, try to do this with the fill lasso, where um, the lasso shape automatically fills, but I just didn't really like how that ended up looking, so I just go in with the normal lasso and then paint over everything um, with a more textured brush, because with the fill lasso, you don't get any texture in the filled area, which is great if you're doing like base colors for something, or if you have more anime style or something, but um, I wanted to have more texture and variety in the lasso shapes, but using the lasso gives me really nice edges from the get-go, so I don't have to like go from a very soft, undefined version of something to a hard edge, which um, which I think fits the stones very well because they're, well, they have edges and stuff. So I chose to go with the lasso first and then paint over top of it and blend a few edges and something. And I absolutely love how the stones turned out. This is my favorite part about this painting are the stones in the background <laughs> because they are exactly what I, what I was trying to achieve with like these painting studies where they look relatively realistic from afar, but once you zoom in, they become super abstract. And this is a skill I'm really striving towards because in my last painting, as you've seen, um, the with the mermaid lay, um, lying in this like gr gro grove, I guess, uh, which looks pretty, which approaches photorealism, I guess, not completely, but it's approaching that, um, where I think sometimes it, some parts of the painting are maybe a bit overworked, and I really was able to hold myself back with the stones in the background. So this this is a huge win skill-wise for me. And um, yeah, the background just went over smoothly, and then I started working on the figure. Here I um, flipped the canvas, for, I think for the first time in the entire um, painting process, and just fiddle around with the a liquify tool a bit to get the gesture a bit more like crouched down. At this point I was still thinking I was going to draw the spear, um, but I was just tweaking the gesture with the lasso tool, uh, with the lasso, with the liquify tool a bit, and then I just go in um, and detail the entire thing a bit more. Here I realized that the arm isn't like 
long enough and not on the right spot. It has to be a bit farther away from her body. And then the hand also came in really quickly, which surprised me a lot. I also tried this method where you kind of indicate where the knuckles go. I think um, Mark Brunet does this a lot. And um, it worked out very well. I might do this again. I usually go with the um, outline approach or not the, like, like the volume approach of the hand where I don't draw like every finger individually, but I take like a bigger brush and just draw one finger with one stroke. I think this gives me usually a nicer gesture, but I sometimes also just like paint the entire form of the entire hand without painting the fingers and then put in the fingers. But this time it went really well with um, going with the knuckle approach for the uh, outstretched hand. The back hand I, I just kind of normally sketched in, <laughs> sketched in normally, <laughs> wrong word order. But um, yeah, now it's just defining the shape of the tail a bit more so it looks quite fluent, which I liked because it contrasts the stones in the background a bit because all of the stones in the background so far are really slanted toward from like top left to right bottom or like further down. And then having this swoop and the mermaid tail, I think, uh, works very well with the entire composition. And now that I have the sketch completed, I go in with the base color. Over the last few paintings in um, the mermaid mermaid uh, series, I I'm starting to get into a nicer workflow because usually when I um, took longer breaks between paintings and also when I, I've talked about this before, I often get, or I used to often get really cramped up when painting and spend way too long on everything. This painting took, uh, I think, I'm not sure, something but some four hours or so, four or five hours. And um, it was really nice to, to see that it came together in this loose manner, but, um, like, I often used to cramp up when doing this, and um, with this, I, I I kind of was able to hold hold back and just go with the flow. <laughs> so now I'm um, dropping in the uh, clipping masks, which is the workflow thing I was talking about. I really enjoy working with clipping masks. I did this in the past as well, but not nearly as extensively as I'm doing in this painting. Basically, there's almost no additional, like, normal layer shading and overpainting in the end. Most of the figure gets rendered with just the clipping masks. And um, this is a workflow thing that I've kind of started to get into over the mermaid thing. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, was, I was looking at the stones because I was so glad that they turned out so well. <laughs> but the clipping masks are really nice because they can go over the base layer of color that you put down and um, everything, every, all, this, all the shading stays within the boundaries of the base layer that is underneath. Now I'm going in with the hair. The hair is, a, is the, probably one of the most abstract parts about the painting because as you can see in the reference image the hair the hair has almost no um, like shading and value variation there are some subtle details and you can see that just from having a brush that is sensitive to um, like pressure opacity I already got a lot of the shading for the hair done so now I'm back to the <laughs> shading of the body with more clipping masks because they are awesome like I really enjoy using them when I first started digital painting, I didn't really even know about them, which is kind of funny, but they are such a lifesaver because if you have a nice um, sketch that you can then fill out with colors, the clipping masks may get, make getting like the rough shading and everything in super uh, easy. And then for some parts where you want maybe um, softer transitions and lost edges to the background, you can just paint over it, or if you um, if you got all of your base stuff down, you can merge all of the layers together. Usually, that doesn't result in any problems, but with some blending modes, if you if you go with other blending modes for the clipping masks, sometimes that can pose a problem when you're merging everything down. I don't know why, and I don't know which blending masks, but I've sometimes um, run, I ran into this problem. But um, I didn't even merge here because I didn't really use that many layers because everything came down um, 
everything came together so nicely. It's also due to the pa color palette because it is quite muted, as you can see, and the entire picture is extremely low key. But I was so happy I was able to pull this off because I've talked, like, not in uh, voice but in text, I've talked about it with the um, last painting that I did two paintings that I haven't posted or I started, I didn't finish them, um, that just didn't really come together. And one of them had a kind of similar lighting scenario to this, but even flatter and more overcast. Because this one has like this almost rim light lighting effect to separate the figure from the background. The other one didn't have that. And it was, pro it was honestly just um, a too difficult lighting scenario for me to pull off like in a nice way. I mean, the image, <laughs> it looks like... And it looks like an image and like a painting, but it doesn't look nearly as uh, good as this one or the uh, other, the last one I did. So I, I kind of got discouraged and scrapped them. Now I'm erasing out some of my first um, sketch layer that I've uh, kept in this blue um, overlay. Not overlay. I don't know what this function is called. It's like... <laughs> You turn everything blue on the layer, it's just one button in Clip Studio and I use this a lot to um, like get contrast for uh, some line layers. But in this one, I usually then turn this off, like the entire layer, because usually I use this for the sketch layer where I paint like the more advanced outlines on top. But here, I actually ended up keeping the blue first sketch layer just very, very... Um, um, with a very low opacity, but I really liked the slight blue tint it gave to some of the um, skin tone parts. And I also kind of enjoyed that in some parts, if you're, sc if you're like scrolling in far enough or have the build in a high enough resolution, you see some of the first sketch lines and I kind of really enjoyed that. So I've kept it in. Then I here I started with um, like putting in the light source basically on the figure because right um, up until now we've only um, really worked on the shadows so now I'm putting in the light and this really helps to turn the oh my god I hurt my hand um, this really helps to turn the form of the um, subject when you finally get both of your um, like value things and like the shadows like the lights and the darks and um, yeah also, I've said that it, it's almost like a rim light, but not quite. I mean, it kind of has that effect, but it's not just on the outside rim, as you can see. It, um, it, uh, the lighting is also further down into the form. So yeah, I'm just fiddling around with it. Just I was just popping in the spear again to look how that would look. And I think at this point, I'm starting to think that maybe I won't paint it, but I was still open to the idea of painting it. Um, but um, yeah, I just wanted to see how it goes. Then here I'm doing something like with the lasso tool, tool that you just saw again. That is also so incredibly nice to use is that if you want to have a nice edge between some parts, like between her arm and, and her, um, like the rest of her body, it had to be separated more because the light was sh shining from like, behind her back and then is hitting her um, her back and her like butt, I guess. <laughs> Do mermaids have butts? I don't know. Uh, but the other side of the arm is dark, so I lassoed around the arm where I knew I didn't want to paint, then inverted the selection and then painted the light sources on the rest. And now we're just doing some of the smaller details because um, it's usually a good idea to work from big, medium to small like this is also a design thing with like shapes and everything, but it's usually good to get in the big lighting first. And now I'm working on like the lighting along single fingers. So it's always good to work from the great uh, greater parts of the image down to the details, because then you also don't get bogged down like painting a nose for two hours. And then you realize, oh my God, it's not <laughs> the right perspective or something. So now I'm starting, now I'm zooming back out again because I was just concerned with a few details. And I realized that the form isn't quite dark enough in certain places. It looked a bit 
like flat and shallow compared to the background and the rest of the image. So I'm going in with another clipping mask layer and I'm just putting in even darker shadows. And you can see I'm losing a lot of edges in this one, but I quite enjoy this. You can all, you almost can't tell the, um, like where her body stops and the background starts, but I really like this. I think it adds a lot to the atmosphere of the p painting because what you see now is basically, um, minus the reflection in the water, it's basically the um, gist of the entire thing, even though we have like over half of it of the um, painting to go. Now I'm going in with like a few details in the hair, but as I've, as I've said, the hair doesn't have a lot of detail whatsoever, which is also super um, fun about this piece because the last few um, paintings I did were very concerned with the face as a focal point and this one uh, is like the complete opposite. It's just body and environment that we have to look at because first of all the face is obscured but the hair is also so like toned down and abstract that we can't even really look at it because there's not much detail and information there to look at and um, yeah, I think this gives the entire atmosphere, uh, the entire painting, a really nice and moody atmosphere and almost looks like she's part of the stone, like hewn from the stone, but still a living thing. And I, my, uh, my, imagina my imagination really went, ran wild. I think if I had wanted to push this direction further, that would have been a really cool idea and a nice call, but... Um, since I want to do these paintings quite quick to work on um, my ability to pull an entire piece together in like less time and to not cramp up so much, I didn't try to go for something like this. And also, honestly, I just don't really have the skills yet to um, execute my own scenes as confidently as I do these uh, photo studies. Like, I can paint like own scenes with like combining a lot more references rather than staying pretty close to one photo reference or just having a reference for the pose and then different references for like uh, the clothing and then even more different references for the lighting and for the background and everything but these pieces take me so much longer and um i'm starting to um, i was getting bogged down when doing these with like so many different things this is also why i decided to do these color studies so that i would have more confidence in just my color choices and also why i decided to do this mermaid thing where i'm sticking relatively close to references most of the time um, and just working on executing an entire piece from start to finish. And I think it's developing quite well. I do really notice a difference in um, how I'm executing things and my overall skill, I guess. But it's only been like not even a month <laughs> since I've done this and I haven't done a painting every single day. Because, for example, this one took me like two days. I worked like for two hours on one and then two hours on the next day. And yeah, now I've to completely talked over laying in the reflections, but um, I separated it in like the front reflections that would go over her tail. So there are in the layer stick there on the top and then the back reflections that are behind her, which are well in the layer stick way further down below um, with the background layers so um, I can just paint the background reflections and then she will automatically be on top because she's um, on the like layers that are on top of the background layer. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope it does. <laughs> so yeah, just fiddling around with the reflections. Actually, the reflections are probably the part I spent the most time with. <laughs> Um, as we see, because right now we have, like, this is the second day, um, and we have, like, minutes of just water reflection painting, and this entire um, time lapse is sped up by a factor of six, so it's six hundred, no, what is it, what is math? <laughs> but anyway, uh, I've realized that the 
um, entire picture is like not exactly the same colors as the, uh, as the reference, which I don't really mind. I actually quite enjoy that my, um, that my picture is more like a little more red tone leaning rather than leaning more towards the yellow, like in the stones and in her skin tone. But I actually quite uh, liked my color scheme. However, I thought that the reflections were a tad bit too like purplish blue and I wanted them to be a bit more green blue. So I selected both the front and the back reflection layer and um, just fiddled around with the um, hue slider. Something I really dislike about Clip Studio, I don't know if the, I'm still on Clip Studio 1. Point whatever, but I don't have the new Clip Studio version that comes with like the subscription thingy and whatever. I haven't really looked into it because of this is working well for me, so why change it now? <laughs> I do know that they have a um, a separate and new and improved color mixing tool, which I would like to try out, but um, I'll see. Maybe they do a sale of the version at the end of the year or something and then I can pick it up. <laughs> because I, I've had Clip Studio for forever, basically. I bought the super, like, I don't know is if X or Pro is the higher version, but I bought like the highest version in like 2016 or something on sale for like 80 euros or something and have been using it ever since. So yeah, but I, um, what I wanted to say is that I really hate that when you choose the hue, saturation, luminosity, um, um, what is the word? When you, you choose like the hue, saturation, your luminosity change thingy, I forgot the word, that you don't see the entire hue slider because I think in Photoshop you can see like the hue you're going in Clip Studio, you just have to like try out if going left is like blue or if going right is blue and whatever. So yeah, we're still working on the reflections, which is also why I talked about Clip Studio and pricing model and whatever. Um, because I'm fiddling around with these front reflections a lot. I um, ha first had them painted in with a rather textured but really soft edged brush. Then I went over with a hard round and erased out a few bits. Then I think I go in with a trusty test four and erase some parts out. Then I go in with a trusty test four and paint more parts in. And I'm fiddling around a lot with it. We're not even at the part where I go like 10 different blending layers deep to try and get it to a level that I enjoyed. But um, yeah, now we're back on the background. I think this is the weakest, weakest part of the painting are these um, background water reflections near her hand. Because there is a lot of depth going on in the original painting that I just wasn't really prepared to properly execute because there's like the top layer of the light that is more purple blue leaning and then there's the bottom layer of um, the stones where the water washes over it and all the parts where um, there's no like light reflection on the water is where we can see the water over the stones and those parts are more greenish and they move in so so fine details that um, just would have been insane to try to do an exact um, photo photocopy like photo photocopy cop photo study like trying to match it exactly to the photo reference would have been absolutely insane so I try to kind of abstract it but I don't think that um, on this part of the painting it, I really succeeded with that I mean it looks it looks fine, but I know that it could definitely look better. I was just not equipped to really dig into it and just go at it and have it be as like readable as uh, it possibly could be. But I guess that's learning. Now I know that this exact um, lighting scenario of water on like stones is a lot more tricky to pull off than I first thought. I've done this a few times, like a few times in my um, color studies and also a few times in mermaid with like water over stones, but not in a lighting scenario like in this picture. And I was just not able to pull it together as well as I would have liked. And here I realized that I needed more um, 
like reflections around where her tail goes into the water. I also think I could have done this part a bit better, but I didn't. And at this point I was like, yeah, her body is underwater, so we should probably tone down the light um, at this point a bit of her tail underwater, so I erase out a bit of my um, clipping mask layer. And then while I was working on the body, I was like, hey, I haven't really done any detailing beyond the clipping masks. And then I start to erase out a few of the outlines at some point um, where the, the lines were distracting from the painterly quality, but I keep a few lines in. So now I'm erasing stuff and just, I'm really eyeballing it here. I don't have a like definite recipe where to erase stuff and where not. Um, I'm just going with what looks good. Then here I'm fiddling around with her, with the shadow on the elbow. I still think it looks weird, but I guess that's learning too. Because my, I mean, my anatomy skills, I can fake a lot, I think, but I don't know a lot. So yeah, but here we're going to uh, render the hands and I actually usually quite enjoy rendering the hands, but it's so funny. Usually hands are either they turn out first try and look amazing or I have to paint them like five times and then they still look abs absurdly ugly. I, I rarely have a mediocre hand day. It's kind of weird. For example, I think this hand, like the back hand, turned out really well with just a few brush strokes. The front hand um, is maybe a little wonky, but I, I still think it's quite good. But on the at the beginning of Mermaid, I did like the clownfish mermaid underwater, and I think I drew her hands like five times, because I just, I, wow, they weren't turning out. <laughs> And, um, but I really enjoy hands, like in general, to paint them, because once you know roughly what you're doing, I mean, I still enjoy them even though I have trouble with them sometimes, because they are so incredibly expressive, and um, also I just think they're kind of fun to um, fiddle around and to try to make them read as a hand with as simple with as simple brushwork as possible like what i was um explaining at the beginning with the stones where the actual brush strokes of the hand are pretty abstract but they come together as a hand super well i've come to realize that the knuckles at least for me the knuckles are a really good um point for this because you can just with one brush stroke highlight a knuckle or put like shadow um, where the knuck knuckle divots in and this helps to uh, understand the form of the hand so much without doing a lot and with like going into the um, like simplicity of brushwork but expressiveness of readability thing I guess I hope I hope I'm making sense <laughs> It's kind of hard doing these unscripted because sometimes I get into like a flow talking about one topic and then I get super distracted. And yeah, here I'm, I'm painting in like some of her, oh my God, what's the English word? Vertebrae, Ver vertebrae things? Because I just thought it would look nice and go with the more moody, dark fantasy atmosphere of the picture. But I honestly have no idea if you would be able to see them because I can't really see them in the reference. I don't even really know where the um, vertebrae are in the body. <laughs> I'm just eyeballing it based off of feeling where it would look good. <laughs> yeah, now I'm, I was separating the body a bit more from the arm. And yeah, we're back to the foreground. Um, I was happy that I had like stopped a bit with it, but um, now we're just fiddling around with it forever. So I'll just let it play and you can see me struggle. <laughs> Here, as I've said, now the um, blending mode layer insanity is starting. I was like, hey, the borders of these light patches kind of have like a lighter border uh, at a few points. Um, rather than being like light throughout, they have like a lighter border. So I tried to put this in with like a new layer that is um, set to a blending mode that like 
ups the um like that makes things lighter the add <laughs> add glow layer mode but it looked kind of weird so it was like nah it's probably the um the darker parts between the light reflections that are throwing me off so i make another new layer then go over like the um the gaps between the reflections with a darker color but it still somehow looks weird so i'm like hmm what could i fix ah i'll just paint even more details on a new normal layer and define the shapes of these things more and more but i just the more i worked on these reflections <laughs> the more i hated them actually and i'm like hmm, this is not working out and you can see me flipping like the layer on and off and on and off and then the, another layer on and off to see the difference between the layers and what it does for the entire painting but i just didn't really like it then i made another new layer and airbrushed over it but this didn't help at all so i make another new glow layer and put in more highlights but it just looked a bit too <laughs> like not structured and kind of haha watered down so i'm like you know what i already did this in the painting i have a tool where i can make super clean shapes that i can just fill with the texture and um, opacity that i like and it would also go well with those stones where i used the lasso tool because I'm using, I'm employing the same technique. So I scrapped the entire thing. I didn't delete them. I put them in a new folder and then lassoed in a few shapes that um, just felt good. I really like this kind of basket shape that the reflection in the middle does. And so I just lassoed it in and filled it with like a bit of texture, a bit of airbrushing. And I was like, oh my God, these reflections look so much better and I've worked like probably 30 minutes on the other ones and I'm like oh my god I could have saved so much time but honestly when I was painting the first set of reflections I didn't even really realize that I could use the lasso tool because my brain I guess just was like hey we're rendering now and not laying in some of this stuff so yeah but I'm glad I decided to go with the lasso. Now I'm softening a few of the edges because the lasso tool obviously makes extremely hard edges. So I'm going in with a few blenders, squishing it around, using like the thumb blender thing. And um, here I'm erasing out a few things because as I've mentioned, a few of these reflections have like a lighter border and are more transparent inside. I guess this is where the... Um, waves are turning uh, towards being invisible like not being hit by the light i'm doing like a sine wave motion with my hand that you can't see i hope this makes sense so um i was so much happier with these new reflections here i'm emphasizing a few of the borders with a glow layer um but the shapes were just so much cleaner and nicer than the previous previous reflections and um, since I already did this lasso trick on the background, I thought it would like be good to have this mirrored in the foreground as well. Because actually I quite enjoy the digital look that you can achieve with, like that automatically often happens with digital painting. Because some parts of the painting look super painterly and could probably almost be mistaken for a um, like not real life painting like a physical painting, I guess. But I really actually enjoy digital artifacts and digital painting because I think that's kind of the, like a thing of the medium. And I like having some parts of the medium um, like show through. And yeah, the lasso tool is a great um, tool for having a bit of digital tulliness, digitaliness, I guess, I mean, I don't know, <laughs> showing in your painting, yeah. Now I'm doing just a few more details here and there and um, yeah, but we're almost done. Honestly, I've probably, I probably could have caught this finished two hours ago. Like when I, when I stopped to the first day, I think it already looked pretty, pretty good, but I wanted to push it a bit farther. Yeah, I'm trying to make my like signature blend in with the waves 
I'm not sure how successful that was, but I guess it's there now. And um, yeah, I hope this video was informative and uh, that you learned something through my absolutely rambling narration. <laughs> I um, find it quite enjoyable to do these. I also learn a lot when doing these narrations because I have to reflect on my painting process. And here's the final. And here are a few close-up shots. And um, thank you for watching and bye!